Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. You can tell a lot about where a company is going by looking at where it's been. ConocoPhillips, Alaska's oil and gas company. The National Weather Service. Good evening and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hepner, and today is December 1st, the first day of the last month of 2013. And as always, when, when we're not on air, you can always find us at www.arh.noaa.gov. And you can look up, if you haven't already, on the social media page, and you can find the Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube feeds. On our YouTube, we have a small summary of the brief weather across the entire state. It's about two and a half minute video, so check it out. If you'd like to get your weather via, uh, via the phone line, you can call our information weather line at 1-800-472-0391. Now on to the hot topics of the day. There's no precipitation that's really affecting um, the state negatively, and we do have a few high wind warnings, however. Across the Juneau area, we have across the Juneau and Inner Channel area, and we have a high wind warning also across the Copper River Delta. And this is for winds that are gusting between 30 and 40 miles per hour with gusts ac across the Copper River Delta to 80 miles per hour with gusts across the Juneau area inner channels. We're expecting um, up to 65 miles per hour here. The one uh, the one warning will expire here for the Copper River Delta tonight at 9 p.m. And for Juno's area, we're expecting that to expire on time at 5 a.m. on Monday morning. Now, take a look at your satellite system. We have a weak low pressure um, to note just to the south of the central part of the Aleutian chain, and also weak pressure is across the eastern areas of Russia, mainly uh, across the state. Um, you can see that there's a lot of clouds streaming up through the bearing. These are mainly low-level clouds and across um, just south of the Aleutian chain, you can see that spin. Looking a clo closer to home, a lot of clearing across the Gulf of Alaska area, and this is a ridge that is built in across much of the state. So mainly just some uh, cloudy conditions on the outer perimeters of the ridge that extends all the way into the south southeastern areas of the Gulf. And looking further to the southeast, there's a lingering low pressure system at, that's weakening as it moves south of the Dixon entrance. So I'll put that into motion one more time and you can see this drier air and the, the spin that's kind of dissipating across the southeastern areas of the Gulf of Alaska. Looking at your weather today, a cold front had been pushed through the Dixon entrance, mainly with showery uh, conditions changing over to snow across the southeast. Across much of the Gulf water area, just clear skies. As you headed north, there was a little area in the interior with some light snow showers here, reducing visibility at times. Mainly across the northern coast, uh, mainly just low clouds here with some sn snow shower conditions and fog along the western coastal areas. Across the Bristol Bay, some patchy fog, some light rain over a cold a cold front um, that's moving into the central parts of the bearing and this was bring some showers across the Pribilof Island areas and here we have a low pressure system that's been kind of sitting down here the last few days with ridging across much of the area this is held out just to the south of the Alaska Peninsula as we head into your weather for tonight this may make some advancement slightly north, just bring some showery conditions across the eastern Aleutians. This cold front will uh, start to dissipate across the central parts of the Bering, um, mainly with some light rain showers where it's a little bit warmer to the west of the Pribilof Islands and then a mix of rain and snow as you head further to the north. Some fog building in into the Bristol Bay areas. Also expect some pa patchy fog to develop across the Cook Inlet, so the western Kenai and 
Also around the Prince William Sound areas, patchy fog conditions here tonight. Mainly um, clear and cold across much of the state with high pressure building in um, to, through the state and out into the Gulf waters. So mainly clear conditions and cold and windy conditions, of course, across the southeast with gusts through 5 a.m. Across the northern parts of the state, lingering um, boundary along here will bring some light snow showers and patchy fog across here to the Kotzebue's Kotzebue Sound in the northwest. And as we head on into your Monday forecast, high pressure will continue to dominate as that upper level ridging moves across the state. And we see those isobars are weakening across the southeast and this will be the indication later in the afternoon that your winds are going to drop off um, for the southeastern areas and all across the east coast. Expect light winds here and that um, may cause the fog to ling linger into the late morning hours. Uh, across a, much of the state with a high pressure and control, we'll see clear skies with some light showers and patchy fog just along the coastal areas. A chance for a freezing rain maybe across the Seward Peninsula as slightly warmer temperatures move to the north. Along the Alaska Peninsula, possible chance for some light showery conditions as this low pressure system from the south just moves slowly to the north. More um, likely to get some showers in the eastern Aleutians here. Otherwise, uh, ridging will take uh, take hold across much of the bearing for your Monday forecast. Bring some patchy fog along the outer areas of this high pressure system. Across the Bering Strait, some showery conditions as the cold front um, lingers further to the north and some windy conditions all the way through here as the, um, the gradient, the pressure gradient tightens across the Bering Strait. As we head into your Tuesday forecast, this front will probably um, finally make some progression to the north, bring some rain all across the Alaska Peninsula and we'll see a period of changing from rain over to snow across the Bristol Bay area and the Kuskokwim Delta. However, um, there is a chance for some, some patchy um, or some isolated pockets of freezing rain here as well as the Seward Peninsula. So expect this to push through and it's really not going to affect Kodiak Island except along the western perimeter as we go later into the day as high pressure will still be dominating across the much of the state on your Tuesday forecast. Expect lighter winds and fog to develop again on Tuesday morning or Monday night into Tuesday morning for the Cook Inlet and the Prince William sound areas and even across the southeastern areas will be affected by fog on Tuesday morning. Interior will be uh, mainly dry with some mid to low level clouds and then light shower activity continuing across the Arctic and the northwestern areas. As we look at your temperatures that happened today, uh, a little bit cooler across the southeast than what we saw a few days ago. Temperatures only reaching into the mid 20s to the low 30s and then on across the coast we saw a mix of temperatures temperature ranging in the mid 20s to mid 30s uh, a little bit warmer here where we had windier conditions and just to the north um, into the single digits and below zero. As we look further to the north across Eagle, coldest temperature of the day near minus 34 degrees here. And all across just or south of the Brooks Range, we saw temperatures dropping well into the lower um, minus 20 degrees. And along the coastal areas, slightly warmer in the mid to upper 20s and back across the northwest, uh, mainly in the upper 20s through the Seward Peninsula. And then as you head a little bit further south across the uh, Kuskokwim Delta areas, temperatures had gotten into the single digits mainly or just below with um, the coastal line seeing mainly in the upper teens. Kodiak Island, big gradient here in the mid, mid 30s to even um, temperatures reading in the 40s across some of the the eastern and central Aleutians with 45 reporting at ADAC this afternoon. And as we head into your evening, we'll see temperatures dropping, but not much along the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutian chain in the mid 30s. And in the single digits across much of the southwest and across the central areas with the coldest temperatures noted across the eastern interior and on over into the lower Yukon Valley areas. Temperatures along the northern coastal areas in the lower to mid teens and in the low teens to low 20s across the southeast. So 
those cold temperatures for you. All right, tomorrow, high temperatures near 30 degrees, um, and then all along the coast in the mid 30s as you wrap around to the southwestern coastal areas. In the teens and 20s across much of the southwest, the coldest temperatures, minus 20 degree range across the interiors. And in the teens across the north and wrapping around the northwest, you'll see temperatures climbing into the 20s. And then temperatures uh, across the chain tonight, will, I mean for tomorrow, will be in the mid 30s again. Uh, flying weather conditions across the Bering will be affected by the low pressure system with IFR conditions across the Bering Strait and just north um, along the Brooks Range, IFR conditions extending back towards the western coastal areas. IFR conditions in the morning across the Kenai Peninsula and up towards the Prince William Sound as we have fog develop overnight. Looking at your pass conditions in more depth, we see Anatovic Pass will be IFR possibly lifting to M MVFR late in the day. And then Adigan Pass will be MVFR, possibly lifting to VFR late in the day again. And we'll see Lake Clark and Merrill Pass MVFR lifting to VFR conditions um, probably early in the day. And then Rainy Pass will also be MVFR to VFR. Looking at Windy Pass will be VFR all day, including Isabel Pass. And we'll see Mentasta Pass VFR conditions as well. Tanita Pass will be VFR condition and the portage will go IFR to M to VFR and that'll be a late day occurrence going to I VFR. Chilkoot and White Pass should um, possibly start out as MVFR and then clear to VFR. And freezing levels will hug the Gulf Coast of Alaska on back towards the northern Bering Sea with the freezing levels between two to 4,000 well south of the Gulf of Alaska and two to 4,000 across the the bearing through the Aleutian chain. And looking at, at your icing for tomorrow, mainly across and north of the Brooks Range and back towards the west, and that'll be below 5,000, as well as the areas across south central and across the Aleutian area above 5,000 feet, some light icing here as well. Your jet stream here, you can see the ridging across the state with a trough just to the south of the Dixon entrance here, the strongest jet stream noted across the eastern part of the Pacific area. And as we look into your 9,000 foot winds, you'll see identical pattern across the state with the ridging centered near the Canadian Alaska border here. And then we'll see a very strong northerly flow in the morning, but during the day it should taper down between 20 and 25 knots across the southeast. All westerly flow mainly south to south west across the southwest and the Bering area between 30 and uh, 35 knots as you go along the coast here. And looking at your 3,000 winds, a southerly flow across the same area with ridging all across the state and extending into the Bering and east, a westerly flow across the northern parts of the state between 15 and 25 knots, change of direction around this surface ridge, but mainly light, lighter winds across much of the Gulf waters and across the southeast looking at 15 to 20 knots. And as we look at your turbulence, this is mainly going to be for the morning hours below 8,000 feet with occasional widespread in the morning across the southeast. And looking across the Alaska Peninsula, mainly affected below 8,000 feet here, and especially as we go later into the day as that uh, surface low pushes to the north, above 3,000 feet across the northwestern areas where that um, pressure gradient is gonna tighten over the, the bearing area. All right, we'll be back in just a moment with your marine forecast. The Cassitsa Bay Laboratory, which is operated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the University of Alaska Fairbanks, is a unique marine research and teaching laboratory that is dedicated to excellence in marine science. The laboratory is currently involved in several research projects. One of those projects is called Hydropalooza, which has received a lot of attention on both a local and national level. Here to talk about this important project are the directors of the laboratory, Chris Holderied and David Christie. Welcome to the studio, guys. Thanks, Thank you. What is Hydropalooza, Chris? Well, Hydropalooza fundamentally is a two-year seafloor coastline mapping project for Kachemak Bay. 
and it's providing high resolution, high spatial resolution, very detailed maps of both the sea bottom and the coastline to support a whole variety of different purposes. Um, it, it basically will tell us the shape of the bay and the coast as well as what's on the bottom. Um, but more than just mapping, it's really working with a whole variety of partners both within the state and outside the state on how do we, NOAA, get more information, better benefits about all this data that we collect primarily for navigation purposes. We do it to uh, make nautical charts and to ensure safe navigation, but it can also be used for resource management, for local development, um, and for emergency response. Why is this being done in Alaska? Well, it's, it's an interesting question because um, primarily that they're within Kachemak Bay, it was a natural place to do this because we have both the NOAA Kasitsna Bay Laboratory and the Kachemak Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, so we've got kind of the um, built-in partnerships and collaborations to make this work well. Um, but also, 40 percent of NOAA's uh, mapping effort nationwide is actually done in Alaska, so it's a natural place to do this. Oh, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what collaborations support this project? Well, this is one of these projects that can't be done without a lot of partners. Um, from the national perspective, we've got two NOAA ships coming in. The NOAA ship Fairweather and the NOAA ship Rainier um, came in last summer in 2008, and they'll be coming back in 2009. Uh, NOAA Cessna Citation Aircraft is doing the shoreline mapping, um, and we're working with many offices within our Office of Coast Survey and National Geodetic Service, as well as the uh, Coastal Ocean Science part of the National Ocean Service. Um, within the state, we're working with Alaska Department of Fish and Game, as well as the Kachemak Bay Research Reserve, um, and Department of Natural Resources, other state organizations that would be interested in, in this kind of information. Mm -hmm. And then locally, we're doing a lot with local marine conservation and education groups. So who benefits from Hydropalooza? I mean, in a general way, everybody who lives or works and plays on or around the bay benefits. Um, at a management level, coastal planners can use the information to do a much better job of what they have to do. People who manage fisheries or manage marine navigation will benefit from having more accurate maps. And people who fish for subsistence, for sport, or commercially will also benefit from having better maps to work from. From a scientific level, the mapping is just the start. It tells us the shape of the bay, so already we understand much more about the details of how the bay is constructed, and that enables us to go on, understand how the tides and currents work better on, on more detail, and then how those things affect um, plankton, crab larvae, things like that moving through the bay, how they affect the fresh water that floods into the bay from the glaciers at certain times of the year, and how sediments are redistributed around the bay. Can you describe some of the early findings from the Hydropalooza research? Yeah, well, the, the um, new mapping systems are give us a much more high definition image than we've ever had before so we can actually, even from the very earliest maps, we can start to see some things on the seafloor. Some of the more exciting things we've seen is right off the end of Homer's Spit there's a landslide. We don't know yet whether this is a, was formed during the 1964 earthquake or whether it's an active feature, but that's certainly something that we'll be wanting to look at very soon. Another interesting feature, there was a wreck discovered off the Homer Spit that I was not well known before. Probably fishermen knew it was there, but we didn't. And um, another very interesting feature up near the head of the bay, there's an area in which there are some interesting circular structures, and these are things we call pockmarks. And the most likely thing these are is a place where something is coming out onto the seafloor. It could be groundwater, or even more interesting, it could be methane that's derived from the coal beds in the region. So methane is very interesting because if that's the case, it will be potentially supporting some very interesting life forms around with these vents. So it's another area of interest that we'll be getting into. Well, this has got to be so exciting for both of you. I mean, when you're seeing these things revealed to you for the first time, I mean, what's your initial reaction when you see a, a shipwreck and you see, you know, these uh, different terrain features that you've never even thought were there? Well, one of the really fun things that happens is when we have, when we put these maps out for, um, public outreach yeah. events and things like that. And it's amazing to see who hones in on what. So the fishermen will hone in on where they see potential fishing areas in the detail. Mm -hmm. um, the kids honed in on things like the, the wreck and we had uh, found a 150 foot high bedrock feature um, that hadn't been known about before. So this 150 foot 
you know, huge rock or whatever it is, we don't know yet. Um, you know, they jumped right on things like that. So it's exciting. Geologists see one part, you know, fisheries managers see something else. It's yeah. information that everyone can use. So Chris, what happens next? Well, we finished up the 2008 field work and from last summer, and we'll be starting the planning uh, for the 2009 field season. So both the two ships, Fairweather and Rainier, will be coming back as well as NOAA aircraft um, in August of 2009. Concurrently, we're processing the data from the uh, first field season, and so the shoreline mapping data is already available through online through the NOAA Coastal Services Center. Um, and the bathymetry data, the, the seafloor bottom data, will be available soon. But one of the things this will also serve as is a model for how NOAA does these kind of projects nationwide. It's called Integrated Ocean and Coastal Mapping. Um, and the basic principle is we map once, but we use the information many times for many different benefits. So we'll be um, providing information on uh, that kind of process, too. Great. That's wonderful. Thank you guys for coming into the studio today. And talking about this wonderful project, Hydropalooza. Thanks for giving us the chance to talk about it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, thanks and so I wish much. you the best. Thanks. And thank you for joining us here in Alaska Weather Facts. Until next time. And welcome back to the show. Now on to your marine forecast across the southeast. Looking at your forecast on Monday, see a northerly flow across much of the area to northeast along the outer channels and 40 knots in along the inner channel. So gales here and then tapering down in the afternoon, small crafts as you head to the south. And then seas will be between 5 and 10 feet along the inner channels and between 7 and 8 feet along the outer waters. For your Tuesday forecast, we'll see the winds coming down out of the 10 to 20 knot range and all out of the north to northwest on Tuesday. And seas here will be between 4 and 5 feet along your inner and outer channels. For your Monday forecast across the uh, south central areas, we'll see a variable wind around 10 knot and southerly direction across the western areas changing to the west and northwest as you head towards the northern gulf. Seas here will be uh, three feet along the western gulf and everywhere else sh should see seas um, near two feet and as we head into your Tuesday forecast as that front pushes up we'll see winds picking up near Kodiak with small craft advisory in this area mainly out of the south to southeasterly direction until you head up towards the um, gulf waters where it'll become west to southwest and across the inlet areas we'll see a weak wind to the north and uh, northeast as you head to the the south. Uh, seas will be between 6 and 12 feet along the western gulf and as you head towards the northern gulf 2 to 5 feet along uh, the Cook Inlet and south will see seas between 2 and 3 feet. Looking at your Monday marine forecast across the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay, we'll have a gale warning here just to the south of the peninsula, 35 knots. Seas between 10 and 15 feet, and then seas between 4 and 5 feet here, and all the winds will be out of the easterly direction or southeast. As we head into your Tuesday, winds will pick up across the area, gales to the south of the peninsula out of the southeast, and seas here will be between 17 and 18 feet along the Bristol Bay and north of the peninsula. Winds will be between 25 and 30 knots with seas between 6 and 9 feet. Heading further to the west across the Aleutian areas, expect the strongest winds across the eastern Aleutians between 25 and 30 knots and then small craft advisory there and small crafts near Shimia out of the northeasterly direction. Seas will mainly be between uh, 5 to 10 feet with the higher seas between 10 and 12 feet just to the south of the Aleutians. On Tuesday, your pattern will change just slightly as you head towards the west, mainly an east to northeasterly direction, but some southerly winds as you head towards the Alaska Peninsula area and out towards the west, it'll be a varying direction northwest and east as you head towards those central Aleutian areas. Seas will be between 7 and 10 feet mainly, with the highest seas uh, just to the south of Dutch Harbor there, 13 feet. Looking across the western coastal area, south to southeasterly flow, small crafts mainly across much of the area, and then seas will be between 7 and 13 feet, the highest seas as you head to the north. And looking at your Tuesday forecast, uh, easterly direction across much of the area, south as you head towards St. Lawrence Island, small crafts with gales just to the south of Nunavak Island. Seas will be between 7 and 11 feet with the highest seas as you get to the south of Nunavak Island. Your 
forecast across the north to northwestern coastal areas on Monday will be 30 knots out of the southeast along Kotzebue Sound north towards the Chukchi Sea and lighter winds across the uh, hugging over towards the Arctic out of the southeast and then becoming more easterly and then towards the eastern Beaufort Sea between 20 and 30 knots out of the northwest. Mostly ice conditions across the coastal areas except when you get to the Kotzebue Sound. Seas four feet here on Monday and then Tuesday seas will be three, uh, three feet with a 30 knot wind out of the south all along the north and north um, the northwestern coastal areas back to Kasabi Sound. Ice, of course, along the coastal areas with winds out of the south, mainly between 20 and 30 knots, and becoming easterly along the eastern Beaufort Sea. Now, just to uh, summarize your weather for tonight's forecast, windy conditions continuing through 5 a.m. with gusts um, to 65 knots near Juneau. Uh, possible patchy fog across the northern Gulf areas and Cook Inlet. Patchy fog also across the Bristol Bay area with the front just approaching from the south. Across much of the interior, clear and cold, especially across the eastern interior. Light snow showers across in the Arctic coast and the northwestern areas. The cold front across the central bearing will begin to weaken with some light showers and snow showers to the north. And then Monday, this front will begin to push to the north, bringing some rain showers to the Alaska Peninsula back towards the eastern Aleutians. Patchy fog all along the coastal, can, coastal areas with snow as you head to the north, possible freezing rain near the Seward Peninsula, patchy fog along the northern Gulf Coast, and windy conditions tapering off in the morning, becoming more pleasant in the afternoon. Then for your Tuesday forecast, expect patchy fog all along the southeast and coastal areas of, of the Gulf and a rain moving into the area of the Alaska Peninsula. All right, thanks for staying with us. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hefner, and we'll see you next time. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska.